Groven was very cross. Thomas had just been chosen by the Queen to take the Fat Controller to Buckingham Palace for a special reward, and he wanted to be the engine to be chosen. That day, after Thomas left Sodor with the Fat Controller, Rebecca was just being cleaned for her first train when Croven stopped behind her. Hurry up, called Croven. I'm a very important engine. Wait until your turn, huffed Rebecca. Pah, replied Croven. I've got no time to wait. Now get out of my way, you fat banana. Rebecca felt very offended, but said nothing as she rolled away to let Croven have his wash down instead. Later, the governor came back with some news. There's to be some trucks that we need to take to Vickerstown, he said. We must go and take them there. Croven was fuming. What me? Why do I have to do it? Why can't James or the twins do it? They love messing around with trucks. You will do as you are towed, said the governor. Croven banged the trucks hard when he got to the docks. I don't believe it, thought Croven. The nerve of some people, honestly. Just then, Edward rolled up beside him. Hello, Croven, he said. You would must be careful with these trucks. They've been quite troublesome lately. Nonsense, replied Croven. You old timer know too much. I can handle this job easily. The faster I get to Vickerstown, the sooner I can finally go back to do what I usually do. Edward was very cross, but before he could say anything else, Croven puffed away importantly. I swear, that engine needs to calm down, he thought. Even the trucks were shocked at Croven. Edward had handled them very carefully, and now he ruined the mood. Well, that was just plain rude, one said. <laughs> I agree with you. Like that engine has any right to speak to others like that. We'll teach him a lesson for sure. <laughs> Proven didn't hear them. He was too busy trying to get the job done as fast as he could. At Marin, Rebecca arrived with her train next to Gordon, and she was almost crying. What's the matter? he asked. Rebecca looked at Gordon, tears in her eyes. Oh, Gordon, Proven was so horrid to me when I was at the washdown. Take no notice of him, replied Gordon. There are just some people out there that will never change. You are a very hard-working engine, and the others that are horrid to you need to get a life of their own. That made Rebecca feel better until Proven passed the two engines at a very high speed. Just look at me go, you two, called Croven. At least I'm not as slow as a snail. Now he'll certainly be in trouble, thought Gordon. Throughout his journey, Croven kept on calling out the other engines rudely until the trucks had had enough. And even the governor tried to slow him down. Slow down, Croven, he yelled. You're going to cause an accident. Suddenly, as they approached Gilding, the point switched, and Croven was now heading towards a siding. Oh no! cried Croven. He slammed on his brakes, but the trucks were pushing him on and on, till they smashed into the buffers. It was a horrible mess, and the governor was red in the face, beaten and absolutely furious. You stupid engine! fumed the governor. You could have killed me. If it wasn't for your impatience, none of this would have never happened. Croven whimpered. I I'm s so sorry, sir. P please, give me another chance. The governor shook his head. Everyone has been giving you so many chances to change, Croven, but I'm afraid that they're all right. Some people in the whole world can't change. They usually make the same mistake over and over again until everyone avoids you completely. Even after that person has apologized and promised they'll never do it again. Croven was silent. He didn't know what to say. I'm sure when the fat controller comes back, I'll make sure he gives you a good punishment. Now if you'll excuse me, I must find a taxi to take me to the nearest hospital. N no 
Don't go! Called Krogan. You can't just leave me here like this! He laid there in the ditch for the rest of the afternoon, and he watched as the engines ignored him, scolded him, and even made fun of him for his actions. As much as Krogan wanted to apologize so badly, he remembered what the governor had said. People would make the same mistake over and over again, even after they apologize. Krogan slowly began to feel more and more depressed as he laid there, waiting to rest. Oh, who am I kidding? thought Krogan. I'm a very horrid engine. How could I be so stupid not to control my anger? But that night, while Krogan was fast asleep, he was lifted back onto the tracks and pushed away by another engine. All the way towards Brendam Docks. And after being pushed into a little shed, Krogan woke up, and there, standing right next to the shed, was Hazel. Hello, Krogan, smiled Hazel kindly. I saw you've taken quite a tumble, so I quickly fetched the breakdown crane to help you. What? wondered Krogan. But why? Because, while you may not be the nicest engine sometimes, replied Hazel, I know they're still good inside everyone. People who just say otherwise just don't understand what people suffer through in their lives. I wish the world was always nicer to others, sighed Krogan. Me too, but at least you have me, and I can definitely promise that. And Krogan managed to smile. He was glad that while the other engines might need some time to actually give him another chance, he was happy that he still has Hazel beside him.